a year ago, the FDA told the maker of Kind Bars that they had to remove the word healthy from the packaging on some of their products. Well, now the FDA is singing a different tune and there may even be some bigger changes coming our way. So today we're gonna talk about what's going on and what it means for us. Now, before we get started with this, if you're not caught up with everything that's happened up until this point, Point, then make sure you go back and watch my video that I made when this happened a year ago because in there I talk more about exactly what the problem was and also my thoughts on the whole situation. Now as far as what's going on at the moment, the FDA has told KIND that they can put healthy back on the packaging. KIND had removed it at the FDA's request a year ago, but I guess they've kind of been going back and forth and petitioning them to get it put back on. And Kind's reasoning is that the word healthy on their packaging isn't a nutrient claim, which was the issue with the FDA regulations. It's actually a statement about their corporate philosophy. So it's kind of, I guess, in this paragraph thing on their packaging, talk about talking about their values and what they believe as a company, and that that's not a claim about the healthfulness or the nutritional content. And apparently the FDA is down with this. So they're letting Kind put healthy back on the packaging, and it's all kind of good to go. But this is bringing up a lot of discussion about the broader issue of what is healthy, what isn't, and what these guidelines should really be on the government side of things. So the FDA has said that they're looking into adjusting their guidelines. And I'll link some articles that talk about everything that's been going on so you can read and get more information if you want. But basically, they are recognizing and putting out there that, you know, these guidelines were made in the 90s um, and our nutritional knowledge has changed since then as we would hope and you know we need to look at these things again and make some adjustments because these guidelines really hinge on fat and that lower fat is better when now we know that fat isn't bad and that you know there's more nuance in our knowledge about nutrition at this point and that should be reflected in the guidelines. Now whenever you're changing guidelines like this it is a process and it's probably going to take a while before things get all sorted out and we see the real result of this whole process but it is good to know that you know they're always looking at things again and making adjustments. I do also think this brings up the question of government oversight overall and how much faith we put in the government's recommendations. And people have a lot of thoughts on this, but my feeling is that, you know, the government guidelines and regulations are helpful. They can help give consumers a little more information sometimes, and they can also kind of keep businesses in check so they can't just slap whatever they want on a product and totally lie about what's actually inside. But I think we also have to recognize the limits of this sort of thing. First off, government regulations are probably going to be a little bit behind the current science because that's just how these things work. It takes time for something to be like a new discovery, then to trickle down into more support and mainstream knowledge, and then for that to trickle down into the policy and the actual regulations. I think the other thing we have to recognize is that the guidelines up to this point have really been focused on nutrients. So fat or carbs or protein or sugar or salt or vitamins or minerals really narrowing in on these specific nutrients and setting limits. But really food is a lot more complex and this process of just looking at nutrients as the markers has put us in a situation where something like an avocado could be considered not healthy because it's high in fat, but a packaged food product could be considered healthy because it's been manipulated to hit all those exact targets according to whatever the government is recommending at that time. Now with all that said, I am excited to see how the guidelines change and where things might go. And I think it'll be interesting, especially after the new dietary guidelines have come out because they've put a lot more focus on foods rather than nutrients. And so I'm hoping um, that with those in place, we'll kind of see that trend fall into other government guidelines around food and nutrition. So that's what's going on with the whole Kind Bar situation. I hope you like this video and let me know in the comments, what do you think about this? The way that our foods are labeled, the rules around it, and what role the government has in that whole process. And if you're new to my channel and you want more healthy eating tips and nutrition info and healthy recipes, then make sure that you subscribe because eating healthy and living a healthy lifestyle really doesn't have to be complicated and I want to show you how to do it. And if you're loving the free info here but you're finding that you need something more personalized, don't forget that I do offer one-on-one -on -one nutrition sessions. So if you're interested in working with me, just let me know and we can get that set up for you. Thanks for watching. I hope you're having a great day and I'll talk to you next time.